It's time for another double indie game review here on the channel. For this episode, we're going to be taking a look at two very different platformers with Lunark and Rusted Moss. Lunark is a puzzle platformer adventure style game that draws a very heavy inspiration from the likes of Flashback, Aldous World, Blackthorn, and so on. And the game definitely takes pride in its use of rotoscoping, with the entire kind of sizzle reel of all the cutscenes used for the credits. And that is by no means a complaint, as the style and animation quality is very well done for the game. Our story is that we play as Leo, a humanoid on a far distant alien world. When our adopted father asks us to brave a mysterious temple for an artifact, it sets in motion a series of events that can lead to the end of the planet unless Leo and our platforming abilities have anything to say about it. So the main gameplay here again follows in line with the likes of Flashback and the rest. Jumping is all committed base, and you're going to be doing that kind of arms flailing jump over chasms quite a bit in this game. Each level is of course its own standalone, complete with puzzles, enemies, and hidden things to uncover. Your main ways of attacking is going to be your gun and your fists. Now in terms of the platforming itself, after the game was released, the developer did patch in some very handy quality of life features that kind of eased up on some of the detection when it comes to making jumps and trying to grab ledges. So you don't have to be as pixel precise for Leo to jump and grab an edge anymore. In fact, you can be facing the opposite direction when you jump, Leo does like a 180 spin to grab it, making it far easier and quicker to do. As for the level design itself, each level again is that mix of platforming with trying to find the items and solutions to puzzles. The game features a very, I would say friendly checkpoint system for the most part. There are a few issues here and there with it. The first is that the game will only actually save at the beginning of each stage. So what that means is that if it crashes or you decide to leave halfway down the level, then you're going to restart it. But the game features a lot of very generous checkpointing for some areas. There were some areas, however, like later in, where it felt like I died and then I have to replay like a good like minute or two more of areas compared to some of the other checkpointing. And I do hope some of that may be fixed just to ease up a little bit on the quality of life there. Other than that, combat felt reasonably good and none of the enemies felt that hard to fight, although some of them could do with like a little bit more of a determination or detection when you're hitting them. Such as these advanced robots you fight, I think it was near the 75% mark of the game where I was shooting them, it was kind of hard to tell if I was even doing damage or how close they were to death. But all in all, Lunark is one of those games that is just a memorial to the age of puzzle platforming. If you're a fan of those games I mentioned before, this is a very solid game, but even if you aren't a fan, the improvements made to the jumping and kind of edge detection to make things a little less fiddly do help this game compared to some of those old ones. And the game is on the shorter side, it should take you a few hours to get through the whole thing, and there really isn't like multiple playthroughs or secrets in it. I enjoy this one, and I hope we see more from the developer and a lot more rotoscoping in the future. But with that said, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we have some swinging to do with Russet Moss. But before we do that, if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then be sure to check out my game design books. For entry level students, we have 20 essential games to study, and then the game design deep dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with more coming soon. And with that, let's get to Russ and Moss. This is a Metroidvania that draws definitely inspirations from Momodora in terms of kind of a similar aesthetic and feel, as well as Bionic Commando with a focus on swinging, or should I say, bungeeing around the world. We play as a changeling, in a world that mixes between magic and technology in the ages of Fae 
and man respectively. The age of man has gone on far too long. In order to bring magic back to the world, we must go out and reassemble the pieces of Titania, which are of course hidden throughout, and there are a number of bosses, enemies, and secrets that are going to get in our way. So despite being one of the Fae folk, we use the amazing magic of Gun to solve most of our problems, as you'll get a small grouping of FPS classics like your machine gun, shotgun, rocket launcher, and more. You'll find a collection of trinkets that can be equipped to your character that can add and change passive benefits, but the real meat, or a uh, pun intended hook, of Rusted Moss is the swinging around. Now, this is not the same kind of grapple physics that we see from games like Flint Hook, or even again, going back to Bion Commando. The kind of your hook here is more of a bungee style physics, which means if you shoot up as you're falling down, the shift in gravity will kind of slingshot you further up. If you grab while you're kind of in mid fall, that will be more of a swing horizontally. And you are going to have to do a whole lot of mastery here to get around this game, especially if you want to do the harder challenges. And at times, this game does feel like a uh, Spider-Man version of Celeste with some of the later challenges you can get stuck at. Now, with that said, the swinging is well done to a point. And the issue that I have with Russ and Moss or the primary one, is what happens when you combine swinging with combat. You see, in this game, you do not have any kind of primary defensive maneuver. You will not gain the iframes. You can't get like a dash or anything to avoid damage like that. Your only defensive moves are going to be built on being able to swing away from danger or do this kind of charge jump once you unlock it. The problem with the bungee physics is that it's not a reliable way to avoid damage because you're dealing with the mercy of the physics of the cord itself. So there are plenty of cases where I will jump, I will try and uh, hook onto something above me to dodge an oncoming projectile incoming, and when the bungee hits, she'll go up and then she'll drop down for that split second which goes right in line with the enemy's attack. And some of the later encounters, especially the, I guess, quote unquote, final, final fight, turns into a bullet hell meets Spider-Man of swinging, dodging, and in my case, smacking right into giant bullets. It would have been, I think, better in this regard to have a way to kind of stop the bungee. No, like, just like, kind of hold and spy, remove all your physics of jumping or movement to be able to probably get into a way to avoid some of these attacks. Speaking about the physics, this is where things also get a little bit difficult with Russ and Moss. You see, because you're dealing with that sense of physics based on the movement and motion of your character, a lot of the jumping and platforming swing in this game is committed. And what that means is, if you perform a jump, and you are not the right angle, you don't have the right motion or velocity, you cannot recover. You cannot kind of alter your physics once you start swinging. So there are plenty of cases where I, this happened to me, I'm sure it's going to happen to you, where you're going to start doing a series of jumps, miss one or not get the right physics intended on the swing, and you have no choice but to take the fall damage or the pit damage. And while the game does feature a lot of areas where there will be kind of like a healing pad or healing marker before a series of challenging jumps so you can just keep trying, there are also plenty of areas where you don't have that. And a lot of your deaths can easily come from just constant chip damage from falling to pits or hitting spikes. So it does lead to the game being a little bit frustrating in that regard. And as a final kind of UX issue, the game I think could have done a better job of displaying things on the map, specifically quest markers or quest guides, because you're going to have quests that will take you all over the place and it's very easy to forget where the quest givers were. 
So all in all, Rust and Moss is a very interesting take on the genre. When you are just swinging around and exploring, I think it's where this game is at its best. And there are a lot of ways that uh, careful and crafty players can sequence break and get into unique spots if they master the use of the physics. But the combat itself can feel a little too frustrating in some respect when you're dealing with a very unreliable defensive move. So with that said, I would recommend Rust and Moss if you are looking for a very challenging and more specifically, very movement focused Metroidvania. If you're coming to this game specifically for like combat or for a variety of upgrades, I don't think it's going to really do that for you. But with that said, we're going to wrap up this double review here. I'd like to thank developers for press key access to both of these games. If you let me to play your game for a future video and stream, please reach out. Do all the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for the discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you some of the art and science of games.